Hey everybody, welcome to Go For Green Living Home Safe. My name's Daniel. And today, I'm going to talk to you about the pros and cons of registered and non-registered goats. These are dwarf Nigerian goats. So they, these are registered with the American Dairy Goat Association. So, so let's get into this. All right, now let's talk about the the pros and cons of, of a registered and a non-registered goat. Okay, now the cons of, I mean, the, the plus plus side of it is being registered is the first thing is you know exactly what you're getting. You know what lines it went through, through every detail. You could track that goat down to every detail of where, where it started from uh, through through its bloodline. So you know exactly what you're getting. And when you, when you buy registered, you're buying for uh, milk production you know so also so that you can sell the babies because uh like if you're a homesteader like me and you have registered goats there it's a much higher income to sell the babies if they're registered i mean you can still sell the unregistered babies and, and but for about half the price so if you're looking for to make an investment that's going to keep paying you back oh sorry to uh, <laughs> it's going to keep paying you back uh, then register is definitely the way to go because it's, it's they're going to make you money on your farm. But now if you're not worried about uh, selling the babies or, or uh, you know, or you just want to increase the size of your, of your herd, then the unregistered goats will, will also, you know, they'll be just fine. But you don't know exactly what you're getting. With the unregistered goat, you could be getting a Heinz 57. You know, 57 different kind of goats in one, and all mixed up. So, uh, you know, I, I see people all the time, they, they're, they're, they're uh, Nubians and Alpines, they're, they're, they're mixing them, trying to get a better uh, milking goat. And sometimes they don't end up with that, you know, because they got mutts and uh, they're, they're disappointed with what they got. If you, if you stick with the register, uh, you know exactly what you're getting and you, you'll pretty much figure out how much, uh, you know, you're... Now with, with, with my goats, uh, it, we, we, I want to be able to sell the babies and I want to be able to milk the goats uh, when, uh, to keep them producing milk for, for my homestead. Uh, something I can barter with, another thing I can barter with, with barter with cheese and barter with butter. Uh, it's just another way that benefits the homestead. Of course, you could do that with the unregistered too. Uh, it's just mine are bred for their, through the American Dairy Goat Association. They're bred for milking. So each one of these goats, I will get about a quart uh, of milk each day. Now, Nova here, she's my biggest goat that I have, and she's. Uh, actually turning six years old this year and she's kind of grumpy and she kind of lets everybody know that she's boss <laughs> but the, the good thing about her and, and I let her get away with a little bit of that is because her uh, milking area her teats are really big so I can reach down there and grab them and it's really it, a really easy milking goat and she doesn't mind anyway so I put her in the milky sand give her some treats, and she just sits there and lets me milk away. Uh, the disadvantage for registered goats and non-registered goats, if you're gonna show them, uh, you know, if you ever plan on showing the, your goats, I know you might think of it now, well, I'm never gonna plan on showing your goats, but then you could be breeding them, and you know, and all of a sudden you get a spectacular baby out of that, and you're like, oh, why well, I wish I had registered them, because <laughs> I could really take this one to the show. So, uh, I'm hoping that happens to me one day, that I'll, be, that I'll uh, have a goat that uh, you know will uh, be able to show one day and let me see if I can grab <laughs> now little Miss Anna here she is uh, as old as, as all the other goats I mean she is just old good I you baby I see you but she's as old as the other goats but she's small she was a quintuplet now, uh, she has brown eyes, which is disappointing because she's solid white, and she's dirty. She got stuff all over her, but she's solid white. And I oh know what, what, what. But uh, if she had blue eyes, which our buck, he has blue eyes, and uh, and he's he's bred her, so she's she's she bred. I mean, it'd be a first letter. She probably have one or two. What are you doing?
So I'm hoping that we get some solid white babies with, with blue eyes. That'll be the most valuable. I'm sorry. The most valuable goat that that and, and the dwarf Nigerian that you can get. Uh, that in the blue, and uh, and baby Dawn isn't going to come anywhere near me. Right now, so, but I'll show her to you. Now if she has babies and she has blue eyes. Blue eyes are the most sought after as far as pets and everything. So. They're, the blue eyes automatically makes them more money. The bigger teeth make them worth more, more money. The, the compact size of them makes them worth more money. So there's so many factors involved in, in registered and non-registered. The color, the general color of them makes them worth more money. Uh, so you get lucky and then, you know, sometimes you don't. But I think when you have baby goats, you're lucky anyway. So they... Or, or adult goats because I love each and every one of my goats. There's, there's, uh, I love them registered or not registered. It's just for an investment status, just for a home setting status. You know, we chose to go with registered goats so that we can uh, have the future uh, income coming back from the, from the home. Now we chose all registered goats. And the reason being is that we would like uh, the further income to come Back, back from from our initial investment, so that they, they can pay for themselves, pay for their food for the year. I, my friend that does this, who uh, did it the, the most efficient way I've ever seen, uh, the goats paid for themselves. He had four goats and one male. The goats paid for themselves, and then he uh, all their food, and they got the best primo everything. I mean, you know, everything they ever needed. And he made another profit on the top of that for about $3,500 extra. So uh, that is a, an excellent investment, you know, just for feeding, you know, goats twice a day. So that's my take on, on registered and non-registered. There's nothing wrong with having a goat pet that is non-registered, that you just can love on and, and let him follow you around, him or her, you know all through the yard and it won't matter uh, one bit you know so there's nothing wrong with unregistered but if you want a future for you know selling the babies or or milking the goats uh, I mean you can milk the non-registered goats too but if you want uh, to be able to sell them as milking goats then I would go with registered and my recommendation is to go with registered if at all possible, you know, then there's pros and cons of, of registered and non-registered. There are really not, no non-cons uh, to having a goat because they're lovable, sweet pets. <laughs> they want to jump on you <laughs> and move around. So there's there's nothing wrong with owning a, a registered or, or non-registered goat because they're, they're wonderful animals to have. And from my suggestion to you, it, I would go with the registered goats so that you can have a future income on your, your homestead, you know exactly what you're getting, and you know what your future is going to hold for you. All right, guys, I love you, and I'll catch you on the next video. Oni Ove Ocha means I love you in Hebrew. Later, guys, and I love you. I miss you, baby. <laughs>